and thanks for choosing the news to be informing Africa and the world. Ivory Coast President Alassane Ouattara has officially accepted the nomination of the ruling party to be its presidential candidate in October's election. Opponents say a third term for Ouattara is against the constitution. He said Thursday that he is accepting the call to run in the interest of the nation and in order to continue putting his experience at the service of the country. He was asked to reconsider seeking another term after his preferred successor, Prime Minister Madugon Koulibaly, died last month. This election is seen as the greatest test yet of the tenor stability achieved since a brief civil war in 2010 and 2011 that killed about 3,000 people following Ouattara's first election win. The opposition party, the Ivorian Popular Front, called his decision to run deplorable. Police in Abidjan broke up a street demonstration by Bagbo supporters, upset over his name not appearing on the electoral list ahead of elections. Mauritanian President Mohamed Ul Ghazwani has appointed veteran public administrator Mohamed Ul Bilal as Prime Minister as after the previous government resigned amid an investigation into alleged high-level corruption. The appointment was announced in a statement from the presidency after his predecessor Ismail Ul Sheikh Sidiya and his entire government stepped down. He did not provide any reason for the resignation, but an ongoing corruption investigation by parliamentary investigators is believed to have implicated several ministers. The new prime minister is expected to form a new government in the coming days. The United Nations Human Rights and Protection Division in Mali has released its bi-monthly report for the period of April to June. The UN recorded 632 human rights violations within the month, which resulted in 323 deaths, presenting an increase of 6%. Armed groups, jihadist factions, self-defense militia and security forces are held responsible along others. The report referred to the series of attacks on the villages of Yanga Sadio and Beni Dema in the Mopti region. The report also targets soldiers of Burkina Faso. They allegedly executed 50 people at the end of May in the Bulkesi area. The UN notes, however, the authorities in Bamako have taken some steps towards ending the attacks. Over to Sudan, displaced Sudanese are seeking for shelter amid deadly floods. At least 10 people were killed and more than 3,000 homes ruined by flooding triggered by torrential rains across much of Sudan this week, the country's civil defense organization reported. Some 1,800 homes were completely destroyed, while just over 1,500 were partially ruined, it added. According to UN reports on August 5th, more than 50,000 people had been affected by the flooding. Torrential rains continue to fall in at least 14 of the nation's 18 states, leading to flooding, landslides, and causing damages to houses and infrastructures. Heavy rains typically hit Sudan between June and October each year, resulting in frequent flooding. Out of the African continent, French President Emmanuel Macron has announced that an international aid conference for disaster hit Lebanon will be held soon. Speaking to journalists at the end of a snap visit to Beirut, the French leader stressed that the aid raised during the conference will be channeled directly to the people, the relief organizations and the teams that need it on the ground. The blast occurred on Tuesday with more than 130 people killed and several thousands wounded. The French president also said that an international inquiry into the blast was needed and that it had to be as transparent as possible. Initial probes have pointed to a cargo of ammonium nitrate which was abandoned in Beirut and exploded in a devastating fireball. And 
the New York Attorney General has sought to dissolve the National Reform Association, the NRA, accusing its powerful leader, Wayne Lapierre, and a number of top executives of siphoning off millions of dollars from America's formidable program lobbying group for their own benefit. Leticia James, the U.S. State Attorney General, called the NRA a breeding ground for greed, abuse, and blatant illegality and said it had gone unchecked for decades while top executives funded millions into their own pockets. She seeks to dissolve the NRA, which was founded in New York in 1871 as a charitable organization and requested that the court bar the foreman. Lapierre General Counsel John Fraser, former treasurer Woody Phillips and former chief of staff Joshua Powell from ever serving in a leadership position for a New York charity in the future. That said, thank you very much for choosing the news. Don't go away. Programs continue on TBS television on TV Meet. Do take care and stay safe.